to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about statistical sampling and studies. This video is going to be a lot of vocab, but hopefully you'll see that it's not too difficult. It's just a lot of different terms we have to talk about. Our statistical studies terms are going to be population. So anytime we're talking about population, it is the entire pool or all of what or who you're surveying. For a sample, that's when you just take a part of the population. So maybe if you're taking a survey to kind of gather what everybody's thinking, but you're really only asking a few selected people. Bias results when a sample systematically favors one outcome. You want to try anytime they're doing statistical studies, they try to avoid bias. So we have different types of sampling techniques we're going to talk about. The first one is called convenience sample. So it says members chosen are conveniently and readily available. So this is when it works to the benefit of the surveyor. They're just picking people that happen to be there conveniently. Voluntary response sample. So the, the name is kind of pretty obvious there that your members are people that have volunteered to participate. Simple random samples. All members of population are equally likely to be chosen. Okay, so that's when you're doing a true random sampling. Systematic random sample. That's when members are put in order and then every nth member is chosen. So that sounds a little complicated, but what we mean would be like if you just put, lined everybody up in order and then you specifically chose every seventh person or every you know, 20th person as your members. Stratified random sample, that's when the population is divided into groups based on a common characteristic, so there's something in common that they've placed them in these groups, and then a simple random sample is chosen from each group. A cluster sample, that's when the population is divided into groups not based on any common characteristic. And then a simple random sample of groups is chosen. So you're probably thinking, how in the world do I tell the difference between those two? Because they sound really similar. So I've drawn this picture here. This is what helped me visualize it. A stratified random sample is when you've divided people into groups based on a common characteristic. Um, so maybe these people are all, all of these people are a certain age and all of these people are a certain age or, or something like that. And then you're choosing some people from all the groups. So maybe out of this whole group, you choose five people from that group five people from that group, five from that group, five from that group, five from that group, right? Every group has five people representing it. Versus a cluster sample, that would be where you've just grouped people into, say, five groups, and there's no real reason behind it. They're not, you know, there's nothing in common with the groups, but you've separated them into five random groups, and then you're choosing all people from some of the groups. So if we've divided our people into these five groups, we're going to take that whole group, that whole group, and that whole group, and these two groups we're not going to sample from at all, right? That would be a cluster sample. So there are different survey methods that we're going to talk about. The first one will be observational study. That measures or observe members of a sample in such a way that they're not affected by the study. So it's pretty obvious within the name. You're just observing and making notes or observations. An experiment, the sample is divided into two groups. One group is given some type of treatment and the other is the control group and given a placebo. A placebo means that it's a it's kind of like a fake pill, so maybe they think they're getting the real pill, but they're not, or treatment, but they're not. A survey is every member of the sample is asked a set of questions. That one's pretty straightforward. A simulation is the use of a mathematical model to recreate a situation with a known theoretical probability so that the likelihood of various outcomes can be more accurately estimated. Let's look at some practice examples now. So we want to choose the sampling technique used for each of these examples. So we're going to be choosing from that first column of sampling techniques. A company randomly selects employees by their employee ID numbers to participate in a survey about workplace safety. So 
what they're doing is they are just randomly picking ID numbers. They're not looking at who they belong to. And then the people they pick are going to be a part of the survey. That would definitely be a simple random survey. A telemarketer is making cold calls to take surveys. He starts with the first name in the phone book and chooses every fifth person after that to call. So remember, that's like where we talked about how every nth person is chosen after you put people in an order. So for here, the order would be alphabetical, right? If he's using a phone book and he's choosing every fifth person. So that is a systematic random sample. And I just realized I wrote survey up here when I should have written sample. So I'm just going to mark that out and write sample. Okay, a politician puts out flyers around the whole town asking for people to attend a local meeting to share their opinions on town concerns. What he's doing is putting it around the whole town, which is good. He's including every part of the town, but he's asking for people to volunteer to come in. So the people participating have volunteered to be there. So that's going to be a voluntary response sample. An employee asks the first 10 customers through the door if they would like to take a survey. So notice he's not being systematic about it. He's not being random. He's just looking for convenience, right? Just the first 10 people that walk through the door, he's going to ask. That's going to be a convenient sample. It's convenient for him to just ask the first 10 people. An administrator groups together high schoolers by grade level. He then randomly selects 10 students from each grade level to participate in the survey. So notice he's grouped them together by the something they have in common. So in this case, their grade level. And then he's randomly selecting 10 students from each group. So that is going to be the stratified random sample. A teacher needs 100 seniors to take a survey on college planning. She makes a list of all the senior homerooms and randomly selects four homerooms to participate. So these students have been grouped into homerooms, right? Um, we don't know that they've been grouped in homerooms by any particular pattern. There could be a pattern, but we don't know. It doesn't tell us that. So we're just going to assume there's not a pattern based on what we've been told. Um, and she's making a list of all the different groups and then she randomly selects four groups. So all the other homerooms don't get to participate. Their groups don't get chosen at all. But everybody in those four homerooms does get to participate. So that's going to be a cluster sample. Choose the study method used. So during this section, we want to think about those observations, surveys, experiments, and simulations, and we want to figure out which one matches each situation. So the first one says, over a period of eight weeks, a new multivitamin is being tested by a group of volunteers. Each person takes the vitamin upon waking up in the morning. A second group of volunteers is taking a fake vitamin, a sugar pill, but they're told they're taking the new vitamin. That would be the control group, and hopefully you're thinking, that sounds like an experiment. It is. Okay, an email is sent out to all customers of a company requesting that they answer some questions regarding their satisfaction with the products. So, they're sending out a set of questions and hoping that people will answer. People are going to voluntarily answer. I'm assuming it's not required. But that would be a survey. Students make notes each week about changes noticed in a plant that they've been growing in the classroom. So maybe the first week it's just like a little leaf and then the next week it's grown a certain amount. Um, so every week they note the changes that are making. That is going to be an observational study. They're just observing. They're not in any way affecting what's happening with the plant. They're just watching it. Okay, this last one says, to determine the likelihood of pulling out a blue marble from a bag that contains five other colors of marble as well, a die could be rolled with each side of the die representing a different color within the bag. Well, in this case, they have six colors of marbles, right? They have the blue plus the five other colors. And a die 
would have six sides, right? A traditional die would have six sides. This one is going to be a simulation. All right, thanks for watching. This has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.